Today, we take a look at a truly massive resin printer. Join me, guys, join me today as we take a look at the eMake 3D Galaxy One. See you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we are going to look at a truly massive, and this thing is over here, massive 3D printer from eMake 3D. This is their Galaxy One. This was funded through a Kickstarter. And with its 16 or 17 inch build plate, this thing is truly massive firepower to printing models within your shop. Now, this is a very expensive printer. It is a very large printer. And looking at the construction of it, it's got some pretty cool bells and whistles, which we'll go over. So unfortunately, I've already unboxed it because it is a crate. So we're not gonna do our usual pulling, throwing the foam, all that kind of fun stuff. Today is going to be a very detailed look at the printer itself. And it's over here in the camera of what this printer actually can do, what it's got, what it's gonna do. I've not printed with it yet, but there's some pretty cool bells and whistles that come on this printer that might be very interesting to somebody, especially someone that is producing a lot of material, um, like I do. So we're gonna take a detailed look at it. We're gonna, it's gonna kind of be the unboxing and we're gonna just kind of take our, inertia, our initial view of this printer. That's what we're after today. We're gonna look at what the printer comes up comes with and I will tell you right now this printer is heavy um, in the crate it was almost 150 pounds outside of the crate it's probably about a hundred pounds so it was definitely difficult to get in here in the studio room and it's gonna be even worse to get it up to my print shop but we'll talk about that kind of stuff when we hop over to it before we take a look at this printer if you're new here and you're interested and you're curious about 3D printing or anything like that, or just want to cool to see the cool stuff that I print and do weird things with, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the channel because we're always trying to grow. Uh, my goal was 10,000 subscribers. We'll see if we can hit that by the end of the year. We've only got two and a half months left. But hey, that's neither here nor there. So what we're going to do, first, hit that sub button. Two, if you enjoy the video and if you find this printer cool and useful, hit that thumbs up. And also, if you have any comments about 3D printing, questions, anything like that, hit me down in the comments down below or on my about page is my email address if you have actual need help printing questions. So, let's hop over and let's take a look at this massive printer. All right, guys. Well, here's the printer. <laughs> you guys can see this thing is a massive printer. And they're duly so. It is built to do massive things. So, you guys can see... I love the door. I love that it doesn't swing out very much. That to me is a downfall of the frozen Mega 8 case. So those doors open up and eat up a lot of space. But as I was saying, oh, big bill plate. I mean, this thing is big, it is heavy, and wow. I mean, this thing is pretty freaking awesome. And we're gonna do a lot of big jobs with this printer. Not even, it doesn't even have to be big jobs. It can just be a, it doesn't have to be big prints. It can be a lot of little prints on that build plate. This machine truly is built for production level event. So we've got a nice big resin vat. We've got the leveling system. We've got the uh, nozzle here that slots onto the vat for the filling system. Um, USB or SD card. That's a little bit different. I'm not used to seeing the SD card option on a printer. But also, let's power it on. We've got temperature sensors on the inside back here. A beautiful, massive heads up display. I'll pull the camera over. You guys can see we've got temperatures, we've got fan control, carbon filter, filter right here where my hand is. I'm sorry, I know it's kind of dark. You guys can't see it. But then we've got the large touch display. We've got USB. Not quite sure what that button does yet. I still gotta figure it out. But we got a lot of control parameters. Uh, print control is your file list. All kinds of settings within the printer that we can adjust right here, right now. So, and honestly, <laughs> there's pages of settings that we can adjust right here on the printer. Then you got machine regulaz regulation where we change the Z axis up and down. Uh, and we can turn on the laser leveling, which 
one of the cool things about this printer is initially this was going to be an extra feature when they did this printer but now everybody got it they sent a new pump tube if you need a replacement that's really cool this was a secondary kit that they sent out to everybody this is for the laser um, high precision laser uh, calibration ruler that you have to install and they sent instructions for that but something no other print company that I've ever worked with is done. They sent two spare NFEPs for the printer. Um, usually you have to buy this completely separately, but they sent two replacements, which is really, really cool. So my initial thought is I've got some work to do on this printer because I got to install that calibration ruler. But let's take a look at all the goodies that they did send us with the printer. Because, you know, goodies are important things. And we like goodies when they come with the printer. So first off, they sent us a card reader, SD card, and our warranty card, and a shoot to box. Ooh, what's the shoot to box card? Maybe some pro lights? I don't know. That would be kind of cool. They sent us, that's a service card. And they sent us, 12 months of Shintu Box Pro. That's a full year license, guys, of Shintu Box Pro. That's 160 bucks right there, just for the license. And then they sent an SD card with a micro SD. So, wait a minute, is that just a reader? Yes. So everything they sent is to be done with the SD card. That's really cool. Nitrate gloves, if you're doing 3D printing, always wear your nitrate gloves. Don't ever handle this stuff without gloves. You're gonna burn yourself. I don't care who you are. You're gonna get it on your hands. You can inadvertently touch your eye and you're gonna pay for it. So, uh, these were the bolts for the build plate and the resin bay and they've got two extra. I gotta check some instructions to make sure I'm supposed to have two extras. So these are the filters to pour resin back into the bottle. Cutters, snippers are always important. No matter what printer you're doing, you want good snippers. Silica tablet, keep stuff dry. Then we've got our plastic putty knife, Allen wrenches, small screwdriver, all that kind of stuff for working on our printer. Bolts, that kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, we'll have to find out what those are for. I thought this was really cool because no other printers ever sent me this either is this is a tray meant for putting out pulling your projects out and putting on and putting the build plate while you're getting your projects out now my only question is that's our build plate that's our tray this is only about half our build plate so while extremely useful not so useful and then putty knife and it does have, it is an edged putty knife, which makes things better. But this little guy is going to be a pipsqueak compared to big projects. So uh, he is good for the small resin printers. Probably not going to be so great for this big boy. Um, and just to kind of feel, not a lot of flex. That's good for popping models off. So good putty knife. That's the goodie box. That was all that was in the goodie box. So... Now I can get that out of my out of my work area. Woo! But big printer, beautiful printer, all metal build, good frame. I like the height adjustable legs, and I, I I am absolutely actually in love with this LCD screen. But just taking our first look at this printer, what's next? Well, what's next for this printer is oh, and it's on by the way, so not overly loud, which is a good thing. Now. When I actually start a print, we're gonna find out how loud that stepper motor and stuff, all that back there is controlling the build plate. Like I said though, I have some work to do because we've got to install the laser calibration ruler, which is about 12 steps to do, which even requires me to lay this printer on its back. Um, so we have to take the vat and the build plate and all that out which I will do this before I take it up to the big shop because uh, I gotta have a friend come over and help me do that. This is not a easy printer to move around. 
So, and it comes in a huge crate, um, wooden crate, and yeah, it's uh, going to be definitely a big project. So, if you do intend on getting this, make sure you got a good friend around to help you move it. Luckily, I have some good friends that are going to come help me move it up the stairs, but I got to measure first because I got to make sure this can even get in the door of the shop because it's a narrow door for some reason up there. So, but a lot of good features here. This is almost a industrial level machine from my point of view, looking at it. I love the door. I love the view capability. Um, and what I may do is when I have it open, I may put one of my Beagle Cam UV sensors in here so that I can actually, because this is a great angle to start trying to get some time lapses and stuff of this machine. So really sturdy, uh, well built, but I do got to find the instructions. I have not found those anywhere yet. These came with the ruler, but no real instructions for that. So good looking printer. Really excited to give it a try. We got to move it to its final destination because I don't do any resin printing here in the studio. That's a bad idea. And because uh, I don't want that messing in my studio. This is where I do all my painting, recording, all that fun stuff. This has got to go back out to the shop to do its work. So we're going to get it upstairs. We're going to get it figured out. So next video, if you guys are curious, once I've figured it out, um, of what resin profiles, what resins I'm using, and all that kind of stuff, definitely stick around so we can catch that stuff and hopefully get my actual thoughts. All right, guys, that's the printer. Pretty cool looking machine to me. And uh, that 16, that 17 inch build plate, ooh buddy, that is the biggest resin build plate in my shop. And we're gonna have some fun with that hopefully here. Once I take a look at the Shintu box and the resin profiles, see if I can even use my usual resins. So we will see, and I'll let you guys know in the follow-up video, how much did it take to fill that thing? Plus the, we have the resin feeds. So mm, did I bite off a printer bigger than I can work with? We're about to find out for sure. So make sure you're subbed. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you do have any questions about it, hit me down in the comments down below. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.